Insight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. A minor earthquake was reported off of eastern Long Island today. Police say there are no reports of injuries or damage. A geophysicist at the U.S. Geological Survey says the tremor happened about 80 miles off of Southampton at about 1045 this morning. He said it was a magnitude 3.9 which is considered very minor, especially since it happened in the Atlantic Ocean. Southampton Town Police say two or three calls came in from town residents wondering what had happened. A Long Island woman has been charged with hitting a bicyclist with her vehicle, then leaving the scene. The bicyclist was declared dead at a nearby hospital. Police say 21-year-old Priya Nanda of Plainview was driving on Store Hill Road in Old Westbury yesterday morning when she struck and killed the bicyclist. The driver then allegedly left the scene. Her vehicle was discovered a short time later in the Staples parking lot in Jericho. Nanda has been charged with leaving the scene of a fatal accident. A Western New York man caught at the bottom of a pile of frenzied Black Friday shoppers rushing into a Buffalo department store says he thought he was going to die. The man says he waited eight hours outside the Target store in Buffalo before the doors opened at 4 a.m. on Friday. He was knocked down inside one of the entrances in the initial rush, causing people to pile up on top of him. Videotape shot by WIBB shows Target employees and a fellow shopper helping the 28-year-old man to his feet as people continue to barge through the doors. He suffered minor injuries. Target says it will take steps to improve its Black Friday crowd management plan. Well, many of the challenges and pressures that students face these days include the problem of gang violence. Here on Long Island, a gang symposium was held recently for educators to teach them ways of dealing with gang violence in their schools. Natalie Shale has more. The problem of gang violence in schools is increasing. Here on Long Island, Eastern Suffolk BOCES and the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office held a symposium in Brentwood for educators to teach them ways of reducing violence in their schools. The symposium featured former gang members, law enforcement officials, and members of the community. Well, gangs are the biggest threat to public safety here on Long Island, so that's why this is so important. And we really have to get to our children when they're young, so we're trying to attack the problem in middle school and high school. And we really want our school districts to take a look at a, a model that's working out in the town of Riverhead. The model is basically based on the concept of FUSE, which is family unity, self-esteem, and empowerment. And what we do is we give the, skill, the students the skills necessary to make a difference in their life. This event is used as an important tool to help educators and groups such as Council for Unity reduce gang violence in Long Island schools. Teacher Robert Tesena founded the Council for Unity in 1975 after experiencing racial violence in his school and was a presenter at the symposium. Then they come into council and they're invited to become part of a new family. They're invited to be open. They're invited to be vulnerable. They're invited to share. They obtain a new value system. Nicholas Hopkins says he was on the verge of being suspended from school when he was introduced to the council six years ago and says his life has changed. And immediately I uh, formed a leadership role in, uh, in my peers and with that leadership role came the responsibilities of, you know, now I couldn't do the things I was doing because now I was rep a representative of Council for Unity and anything I would do would reflect badly upon Council for Unity. Well, Sheriff DeMarco says safety, he wants to use the council's model to reduce so gang important. conflict and in the county correction facility and says even though he was skeptical about it at first, he's now a believer. In Brentwood, Natalie Shale, LI News Tonight. 
It's holiday shopping time, and many consumers are having to decide between heading to the stores in the mall to shop or staying home and buying everything online. Store shopping offers the chance to touch and feel a product. You can try it on or you can try it out. Online, on the other hand, offers the ease of at-home shopping and delivery right to your door. So what are you choosing this year? We asked some Long Island shoppers. Why is that? Um, no lines. Uh, everything gets delivered to you. You can comparison shop. Um, I really just hate being out in the crowds. Online by 100%. A lot of them get free shipping, and I just find the prices to be better. It gets shipped to your house. You don't really have to go out. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to deal with people. Like, And um, a lot of the deals lately have been free shipping. If I was going to buy probably uh, in the store, it's more fun. Well, one study found that a whopping 77% of Americans plan to do some online shopping this holiday season. And over half of all shoppers say they plan to use the Internet to compare deals between stores or retailers' websites. And it's reported retailers will try to compete with Internet sales by offering significant promotions throughout the holiday season, emphasizing value. Nassau County police say it was the smell that gave it away. Officers say they were responding to reports of a strong odor of marijuana in the vicinity of Morningside Drive in Westbury last night. They say at a home along the drive, they encountered 23-year-old John Driscoll. And when they searched his home, police say they found 164 marijuana plants weighing over 10 pounds. Authorities say they also discovered over $10,000 cash in the house. Driscoll has been charged with first-degree marijuana possession. It was another down day on Wall Street today. The Dow was down 46 and a half points. NASDAQ was down 27, uh, just under 27 points rather. And the S&P was down seven and a quarter points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. A knit and talk support group for women with breast cancer meets at Adelphi University School of Social Work in Garden City on the first Monday of each month from 2.30 to 4 p.m. For more information, call 516-877-4314. The American Parkinson's Disease Association has a monthly support group at New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury on the second Friday of the month at 2 p.m. For more information, call 516-626-6114. The Nassau County Museum of Art presents Family Sunday at the museum in Roslyn Harbor on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. For more information, call 516-484-9337. And the North Shore LIJ Health System offers a weekly support group for stroke survivors and caregivers at Plainview Hospital on the fourth Thursday of the month from 2 till 3 p.m. For more information, call 516-719-2411. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to LI News Tonight at NYI. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting, journalism, radio. digital film, public relations and advertising, television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus, a road to the job you've always wanted in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Some stories around the world today. Japan's foreign minister says Tokyo will not participate in negotiations with North Korea if the country doesn't honor previous agreements. China last week called for an emergency session of chief negotiators to the Six Nation Talks 
which are aimed at convincing North Korea to abandon its nuclear weapons program. But the Japanese foreign minister says that such talks were impossible after North Korea hit a South Korean island with an artillery barrage just last week. Iran has agreed to discuss its nuclear program at a meeting next week in Geneva. But the Islamic Republic says it won't make one iota of concessions about its nuclear rights. The talks will be the first in a year after negotiations bogged down. A European Union foreign affairs chief will act on behalf of the United States, China, Russia, France, Britain and Germany. Iran said today that it's ready to enter nuclear talks with the world powers under equal conditions. The United States and its allies say Iran is seeking to build a nuclear bomb, but Tehran denies that. And China says it's launching a new six-month crackdown on rampant copying and counterfeiting of software, medicines, and other goods. The announcement today comes amid complaints by industry groups that piracy of software and other goods is growing despite repeated government pledges to stamp it out. Cabinet officials say the crackdown will target a wide array of products from illegally copied computer software to corn that's falsely labeled as organic, fake or illegally copied music, designer clothes, medicines, and other goods are widely available in China. Industry groups say Chinese piracy costs legitimate producers billions of dollars a year in lost sales. In a winter fire emergency, you don't want volunteer firefighters to have any trouble getting to your home as fast as they can. So in preparation for the stormy winter weather that's sure to come, an antifreeze company recently helped some volunteer firefighters by winterizing their personal vehicles, as Kyle Ritan explains. These car care technicians visited the Manhasset Lakeville Fire Department to inspect and winterize volunteer firefighters' personally owned vehicles. They're part of a campaign called Own It For Good that's sponsored by Prestone, the antifreeze company. Preparing, preparing volunteers who use their cars for good to winterize their cars for the winter and also just an overall inspection for those people that use their cars for a good cause. They're doing a uh, winterization point check on all the vehicles, uh, volunteer firefighters, uh, checking tires, uh, fluids, antifreeze, uh, windshield wipers, blades and stuff like that. And this volunteer firefighter told us why this is so important. Um, you know, I think, you know, reliability, dependability, uh, especially as a volunteer, you know, your personal vehicle has to be ready to respond just like, you know, one of these fire apparatus does because, you know, if you can't get to the station and get in the apparatus and go, then the call doesn't get answered. Representatives from Prestone tell me between 50 and 100 volunteer firefighters will have their cars inspected and winterized here at the firehouse. Well, uh, they added washer fluid to it, uh, and they told me I needed uh, an engine mount, and they told me the tire pressure was low, and then one of the backup lights were, were, were out. The Own It For Good campaign ended on November 20th, and Prestone donated $5,000 to the local fire department and $15,000 to the National Volunteer Fire Council. In Manhasset, Kyle Wrighton, LI News Tonight. Well, we had a mostly cloudy day today. There were a few scattered showers this afternoon. The high was in the mid-50s. Tonight, steadier showers moving into the area with a low in the low 50s. Then tomorrow, heavy rain and windy, but it will be milder with a high up around 60 degrees. Thursday, sunny skies with a high in the mid-40s. Friday, mostly sunny with a high in the mid-40s. And the outlook for Saturday, mostly sunny, a high in the mid-40s. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.